Well, hey, welcome to Proven's Garage, where every day's a party. So I recently got this Crossfire system uh, with a razor cut, uh, razor weld, 45 amp plasma blaster. I just wanted to give a couple tips to anybody that bought one of these or is planning to buy one of these. Um, it is pretty plug and play, but I did run into a couple things during assembly that it was either it wasn't so clear in the instructions or maybe I didn't read them well enough. But there's a couple little things that are going to help when you get this thing set up. I thought maybe sharing how stupid I am could help you. <laughs> so anyway, the first problem I did or I ran into, uh, created for myself I guess, is the main Y-axis and gantry bar here, this silver bar, goes on only one way and that wasn't very apparent to me. Uh, I put it on and apparently when I put it on it was upside down. So there's these holes that go through to mount your uh, lead screw and your motor and apparently they only line up in one direction so pay close attention to that when you put this on because if you get this on and you get your gantry on and everything else together realize that's upside down when you're going to put your lead screws in you're gonna to have to take all of that back apart one of the other things i ran into um, was trying to get the table leveled and it wasn't very clear there's a lot of instructions online uh, langmere systems has plenty of tutorials and they mainly have a tutorial which shows how to level your x-axis bar for your gantry and that went along pretty easily but what was harder to find was leveling it in this direction so basically what you have to do is you run your gantry up and down with your torch head and you measure here and you measure in the back and if it's off a little bit all you're supposed to do is change the height of your wheels which seems kind of not right to me but apparently there's enough twist in the table, or enough allowance of twists in the table that leveling your wheels will actually change the level of your bed. And so I was doing that and I wasn't really getting any results. And so what it turns out you'd have to do is crack these bolts loose that hold your legs on and then try adjusting it again, leave them mostly tight, just snug, level it again and then boom, that fixed it for me. So what I'm building today is basically just a uh, TIG welding rod holder and I was cutting out some test holes to see how how well I could fit this PVC in there and turns out it works pretty damn well so I measured them and compared it to what it was supposed to be from the software and it was within about 15 thousandths and that's pretty good, I would say, for just cutting out with a plasma cutter. So I'm just using some mild steel and some PVC, and I'm going to cut out some parts, and then we're going to put it together and see how it goes. All right, so here's one of the parts I'm going to cut out, and I'm not going to go through all the steps on how to draw this up in CAD and how to write your cutting profile and all that stuff. There's plenty of really good tutorials online, and I followed those, and it got me through them no problem. But here is what I want to cut out. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to write my G code for it. Pretty easy. I have it pop up a window just so I can look it over and make sure everything looks okay. And then I'm going to go over into fire control. We're going to open this up. And then I'm going to set my origin and then I'm gonna get set up on the table and then all we got to do is enable the torch and go so let's go do that so I'm gonna get my torch set where I want it to start be careful you don't run into <laughs> your bolts at the end of your gantry there are no stops on these there's no automatic stop so you got to pretty much do it by eye and be careful now I can do a dry run to make sure that my torch head isn't going to hit anywhere if my piece is warped or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll do this in real time. Alright, this looks pretty good. I'm just going to jog it all the way over to the end of this part just to make sure. 
and looks like we're pretty good. So I'm going to go back to zero, and then we're going to cut. And I'm going to leave this in real time so you can see how fast this part cuts out. Might be a little bit warm. There we go. I think that was about a minute and a half, two minutes, and we got a pretty good looking part. A little bit of flash, which comes off pretty easily. Might have to hit it with a flappy wheel on my angle blaster, but that's pretty awesome. <laughs> So, like I said, so far I'm pretty happy with this thing. I'm gonna cut out a couple more parts and then we're gonna put this thing together. All right, well I already cleaned these parts up and got them prepped to weld. So I wanted to just show this before I did anything to it, how little flash and how little cleanup there is after using this thing. You can see here, like that's just little bits of flash is pretty much all you get and most of it just comes right off. And I'll hit this with my angle blast really quick to clean it up and I'll prep it up for some welding and then we'll start putting it together. Another quick tip. Uh, if you're like me and you're going to need to move this thing around and you have a water table, be very gentle when you move it. <laughs> Clearly I made a mess, but luckily what I'm using for fluid in this, you can buy fluid for CNC plasma tables, it's pretty expensive. What I did is I just got some borax and mixed a half a cup of borax into a five gallon bucket full of water and this held about probably seven or eight gallons to fill it up to where I wanted it to. I leave the excess in my bucket because this stuff does evaporate, it is water. And when you're cutting, it'll splash some out, so I always keep a little bit on hand and it's super easy. If you gotta drain it out to move it, no big deal. Just make another couple buckets full and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. So if you're wondering how these tubes are gonna stay in here, the way I designed this is these holes are a little bit looser of a fit. And then the holes on the other side are an interference fit. So I actually have to tap these into the other holes. But once you get them in, they're not gonna come out too easy. So I'm gonna put this thing together. So 
top three have caps on the outside because it's going to be aluminum, stainless, and mild steel. And then the bottom two have caps on the back so nothing can come out the other side. But open on the front because these are just going to be scrap pieces. I think it turned out great. So now I got all my welding wire in here, mild steel, stainless, aluminum, and then two scrap bins. And I can even keep tungsten in here if I want to. But for all the stuff that's not scraps, I got some nice little caps to go on there to seal them off and keep debris out. So there we go. Well, all right, to wrap this video up, this system is awesome. And compared to any of the other CNC plasma cutters on the market, it's the cheapest I've found. Now this setup with the water table cost me about 2,600 bucks, a thousand of which was the plasma cutter itself. Totally worth it. Those little parts I made today would have taken me hours to cut out by hand and there's no way I could have been that accurate with them. So, so far, super pleased. I'm gonna be doing a lot more stuff on this. The only other thing that I'm definitely going to add to this system is torch height control. If you have parts that are a little warped and wavy, torch height control just levels itself out and keeps its distance from the material on its own. It seems like a pretty incredible, a pretty incredible thing. So I'm gonna have to spend another 500 bucks and get one of those. So thanks for stopping by. We'll see you again real soon on Probe's Garage.